All right, the Supreme Court hearing arguments today that could affect how congressional districts are drawn throughout the country, and the outcome could affect the party makeup in Congress in the future. It starts with the understanding that the Constitution says the manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But what happens when a state legislature decides what congressional districts should look like, but a different body, such as a state court or a committee created by state law, rejects what the state legislature decided. After all, if Democrats draw districts that favor them or Republicans draw districts that favor their party, is that fair? Or is it exactly what our founding fathers expected? And if a state court decides that these districts are unfair according to their own state's constitution, when, if ever, should the United States Supreme Court strike it down? Those are among the questions being asked. Joining us right now to continue the conversation, we welcome constitutional attorney and GOP strategist Amir Benno and distinguished professor uh, at Turo University, Thane Rosenbaum. So, Thane, I'll start with you, sir. Uh, your thoughts about the arguments today and what we should be looking for. Well, Bob, you know, everyone is talking about this as if it has to do with congressional districts, but it's much broader than that. Remember, this whole matter came up just days before the presidential election of 2020. People forget that in the battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and especially Pennsylvania, there were emergency applications to the Supreme Court that said, hey, everyone, the election laws have been changed to permit a lot of mail-in voting, absentee voting, ballot harvesting, late arriving ballots, early voting, and state legislatures were not involved in any of those decisions. They were made by state election officials and by courts. So Republicans ran into the Supreme Court saying, hey, look, fast track this. We have to do this before the election. At the time, at least three of the justices, Alito, uh, Gorsuch, and, uh, and uh, Thomas, made it clear that they understood what this was about, which is that the elections clause, which you just read, said that when it comes to federal elections, it's the responsibility of the state legislatures, no one else. And it, the Constitution rarely mentions state legislatures. So that's interesting. Like, why did the founders focus on this? So for years, this has been an open question. Does that mean only state legislatures can set, establish these rules yeah. hmm. or can courts and governors and election officials. Mm -hmm. But this is really a much deeper issue okay. than these maps, and it has, it'll have something to do with the 2024 election as well. Yeah, Amir, what stands out to you here? Well, well I agree with saying this is really important, and it did come up in 2020. Uh, you know, what happened was is the Pennsylvania legislature had said that all mail-in ballots had to be in by 8 p.m. on Election Day. Uh, went to a court and a court said, you know what, we're going to allow mail-in ballots to come in within three days after Election Day. So that's a perfect example of a court overriding the legislature and setting new rules um, in apparent contradiction to the Constitution. But the issues that we're going to have here, uh, one, there's precedent. So uh, these independent redistricting commissions, the Supreme Court already said, even though that's not a legislature, we're going to consider it to be a legislature uh, under the under the law. They said even though a governor can veto legislation, a governor is in the executive branch, not the legislative branch, but that too doesn't violate uh, the elections clause. So we have some precedent that we have to, to try to square, and it's going to be very difficult, uh, I think, for these judges. I think we're going to see a very fractured decision. Ultimately, what the courts, I think, are going to be concerned with is they don't want to have one set of rules for federal elections and another set of rules for state elections, splitting Election Day into, if there still is such a thing as Election Day, into two separate days. Um, so so this, is, this is definitely an issue that they're going to struggle with. Uh, Thane, if you had to look at this, do you think this is going to be hands off from the Supreme Court? In other words, we're going to let the states decide what they want to do. And if so, what's the implication of that to the whole process? Well, remember, elections have consequences, right? So the way to switch, change the election rules is to get your state house to your party. So does that mean by definition then, and I was kind of suggesting the founders might say, well, if you elected these people and they decided the right districts that favored them, well, that's the way the process works. But the argument, including in the, the that I was listening to, to today, is if you become, if a political party becomes so entrenched in its political power that it can ensure its power, is that fair? And that was one of the questions brought up in the argument. Right. And to add to what Amir said, which he was absolutely correct, is that there's other issues that are precedent setting, which is, for instance, 
Congress can override this as well. Congress can actually pass a law that would refine or explain what the election clause really means. So there, it's not as if there's hmm. no oversight. There is mm -hmm. potentially congressional oversight. But again, remember, the founding fathers were very, they believed in representative democracy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were very creeped out by the idea that, uh, like, election officials, who are election officials? Yeah. You have mm -hmm. to be elected to something. So that's why elect, uh, legislators, either in Congress or in the state house, are always preferred because they technically represent the votes of right. the people. Right. Yeah, uh, Amir, a lot of uh, mainstream media and more liberal um, media outlets, um, um, MSNBC, NBC News, are saying that this particular case, quote unquote, threatens democracy. Your response to that? I think this dovetails nicely with Bob's last question, which is, in this particular case, you had a, a GOP majority legislature that drew a map that got thrown out by the courts, and the courts drew a new map, and that is what uh, prompted this legal challenge. But it can flip the other way. Look at New York in this past election cycle. You had the the Democrat uh, the Democrats run both chambers of the legislature in New York, and they crafted a map that got thrown out by state court on state constitutional grounds. And the new map is what gave the the Republicans the advantage, and ultimately why the Republicans have the majority in the House. So it can work both ways. I don't know that democracy is at risk, but neither party stands to gain necessarily by this. In fact, many of those states uh, that are blue states or swing states are the ones that have independent redistricting commissions, are the ones that use the most state law challenges using court system to challenge uh, these sort of partisan gerrymandering. So getting rid of those things would give those blue states uh, generally the, the run of the, uh, of the field yeah. to be able to uh, secure that the Democrats stay in power indefinitely. So, yeah, so this can, if anybody is going to be threatened by democracy, I, 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 I think it might be... Uh, the Democrats who are threatening democracy here. Yeah, and, and that's something being left out because, as Amir is saying, you do have some of these bodies who say, yeah, well, that, that was too much in your favor. So, And then they, there are legislatures who say, goodbye, we're not going to use you anymore. We're going to decide this. And, Bob, what's, what's, what is democracy represented by? One person's voter suppression is another person's voter verification. Both are democratic principles, right? We should be able to verify the legitimacy of the votes, mm -hmm. and we don't want votes suppressed. Yeah. But both of those things seem to be in tension, but they both represent democracy. The people are seeking voter verification. They believe in democratic ideals as well. That's why I said it's not just about this gerrymandered congressional districts. It's about mm -hmm. the changes in all these rules. Professor, I did want to ask you, <laughs> one of the things that I think may be different these days versus when the founders set everything up is the power of the political party. They may not have envisioned how much power they had. And Newsmax audiences, that's why he's my best student. <laughs> <laughs> I, I may be late to class today. I do, you know, I had some things I got I do. saw you. you. You were already excused. Oh, okay. Wow. That's great. That's right. Now, can Teacher's you tell pet. Me, Teacher's pet. <laughs> get somebody to write my paper? Thank you, Thane Rosenbaum and Amir Benno. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. And coming up, it has been 81 years since one of the darkest days in American history when we return to look back at the attack on Pearl Harbor.